Hello people and welcome to yet another episode of Some Man's Tackle Time. Tonight it's a nice short and brief one. How do you fill your reel up with braid? We had a couple of requests of the lads on the on the group there, so that's what this is about. Here I've got my good old faithful trusted Ziplex short stuff. <laughs> just a bit of a laugh or it is it's just a piece of uh, of old fishing rod that I've recycled. I've um as you can see I've just whipped on uh, eye on the top of it. Um Put a rail seat on the bottom with a little piece of shrink tube on the bottom of it, and then I'd attach any rail I would like to to fill it with, with fresh lime or braid, whatever I chose to pick. Anyway, here I've got the new. I've just got it through the post today. Sixty pound Spectra. Um, it's a thousand meters. The diameter is 0 0.40 mil. I've paid sixteen pound fifty for one thousand meters from. Hong Kong, you can get it from China, Hong Kong, various different locations over there. And it took about 10 days to come, so it wasn't really the end of the world. I was quite happy with that. Um, I know you can't really get it overnight, um, but I didn't mind the wait, so I'm happy with that anyway. So, anyway, that come through today, and I've now got my Daiwa Saltist LD20, um, which is a H, HSH. There it is there, if you just like that. Have a look at it. I done a video on this up on the River Way one time. It's an um, absolute fantastic, awesome piece of kit to say the least. It's as simple as that. Lever drag, extremely strong. The build quality is just absolutely awesome. Um, it's been professionally magged up. Retails for uh, retails for around about the three hundred and sixty pound mark. And apparently the, the to get them mugged up, I've heard it's around about eighty pound. Like I say, it was already done when I bought the rail. But what a rail it is! And um, the ratio on it's seven to one. So one turn of that is seven turns of the spill. Um, so fishing them big, heavy, bulky grounds, and you want to get that lead off the ground quick. This is the one for me. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to load it up with sixty pound spectral braid. So, as you can see, there we are there, that's loaded onto me, me little zip X short stuff. What I do then is, I'll take the braid, put the braid through the top ring. Now if you would like to zoom in on this, this is the knot that I use to connect braid to my palm size multiplier. I have purposely... You notice I've got a roll of insulating tape there. I've purposely left the insulating tape off because I'll just like to show you what normally happens. When you are connecting fresh braid to your palm size multiplier, it's always advisable to maybe put a little bit of um, mono on the back, a little bit of insulating tape, just for the braid to give it something to bite onto. To be quite honest with you, I've got several rails that I've got nothing on. It just seems to get a hold off quite well. But on this little guy, it seems to slip. So, I'll just show you what tends to happen. So, you've got your braid, and you've wrapped around the back of your spool, as you can see there. Make a loop, like so, and get the other side of your line. And all you're going to do is a simple slip knot. So, go through that loop, as you can see, and pull it through about two inches. Three turns, one, two, three, like that, back through the, the bottom. Or is it just a half blood nut? That's all it is there. You get to there and you pull that tight, and that's it. And that there is a slip nut. What we'll do there is cut off the excess. Got these yesterday from Andy Rutherford's. Call down for a bit crap on Randy. We actually what is I've got a rod building. I'm gonna do a video on it soon. It's a 15 foot Ziplex Zetec TXL with an M4 uh, with a sorry with a Ziplex Air 407SU tip in it. Um it's it's a beast to say the least. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll 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 do a little bit of a video on it and show all the Ziplex fans out there. What a rod, crap and rod. Uh, for, for obviously heavy ground and cliffs. 
Anyway, so anyways, down there, get a set of rings from Andy, and he happened to have these on the count of one ninety nine. Um, you want to see how sharp they are? Watch this. A little bit of braid. <laughs> Lovely. Anyway, so this is the slip knot. Watch the knot. And that's it. But what will happen now is if you look. The spool's just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. So what, the braid hasn't got no um, tension, if you like, on the spool. So what we'll do is we'll just cut that back off, as you can see it's doing now. And we'll get some insulating tape. You can use mono. The reason I'm not using mono on this is because I want to get as much braid onto this rail as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn that on so you can see it. I'll get that right in the middle to there, as you do. And we'll fit that round. I'm pointing my hands on getting in the way of there. Right, so we'll get rid of there. Get the scissors. And we'll just, I'll just trim that up a bit to there. Slap that back round. Right, there we go. Now I've got the rail with a, a little bit of uh, insulating tape on it. Right, so we'll just repeat that knot again. So we'll put the braid around the back of the rail. So you come to there. Right, so again, make your loop, as you can see there. I hope you can see that at home. Make your loop. Put your line or your braid in this case through the loop. You can use this knot with mono as well, it's fine. Three times. One, two, three. Through the bottom. Pull that tight, like I've just said, it's just a half blood. Cut off the excess. So you know there. And with a bit of luck, I'll pull that taut. Then we'll get some friction there. We'll get that little steer tight as it has. Right then. And as you can see now, I'll just uh, quickly put that up. And as you can see, no problem. It's got it first time. Anyway, we'll, uh, I'll loosen that off. And my cameraman's going to get the job of um, holding this spool of spectra as I haven't got it in my line dispenser. So he'll do that. Thank you very much, mister. And um, I'll quickly show you how I load up my rail. Right then. I'll just get this started off first. There we go, no problem whatsoever. With a bit of looking at the say there on the camera. Just about there. Right then. So what I'll do now is I'll just cut that there. And we'll just leave that to there like so. Now, <clears throat> in a way what you should do by right is at this stage you should be putting a shock later on. It's my preference where I'm not going to bother putting a shape of shock later on. One of the reasons why you should use a shock leader is because you know yourself when you're using braid, there's no stretch, there's no give. It is what it is. So if you were bringing a fish in, say you were fishing the same as North Pier, um, and you were bringing a fish in, 
um, you do stand the chance of bumping it off, especially if it's in rough conditions, because there's no give as in the shock leader. Um, with you using a shock leader, obviously it's going to take the shock, and you, with you using mono, it's got some stretch in it, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, but my preference, I've never lost a fish like that, so I chose not to use a shock leader, um, and that's that's the way it is on here. Anyway, so now that we've done that bit. Just grab a handful of um because it's that guy there that I'm looking at. One of me fast links. I don't know if you've seen these before, you will have, but here is one of the um the new power swivels. I bought these from Andy Rutherford's. I do believe I've got a box of them somewhere. There we go. I'll quickly move these out of the way. These power swivels here, if you can see them here, 275 pound braking strain for that little fella there. That's what you can use on your main line. I mean, when, when you're thinking that, like, there's um, just find a, a crane swivel, there's a crane swivel that you normally use, it's a size one. There's quite some size difference, and I know for a fact that that isn't 275 pound braking strain where that fella is. So, I mean, I've used crane swivels for years, I think they're a great thing, I really do. Um, and I've I think the cheapest place I've ever found them was uh, down there at North East Tattle Supplies. They seem to do a, uh, a very cheap range of them. But the big, the bulky, and I do like to have things a lot smaller. So you've got that one there, which is £275 breaking strain. Look at that little guy there. I, mean, I know I've talked about this on another episode of Sandman's Tattle Time, but £100 breaking strain, that little guy there, for your hooks notes. Fantastic, brilliant piece of kit. Anyway, let's get back to this rail. So we've got here, all we've got here is a fast link with um, a power swivel on there. And we're going to do the good old famous knot that you've seen us do time and time again. So we'll put that in through to there. I've pulled that through about, what's that, five inches? Three times. One, two, three. Put that back through the bottom. And three times again. One, two, three. You end up at that point there. Pull that a little bit tight and just get a good hold of it and it'll just slip up and bang it in. <coughs> we shall trim off the excess. Like so, and there we go up there. That is extremely strong, very neat and tidy, and ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll just get that there. I'll take in that bit there. Take it off there. And there you go. That is one saltest LD20. HSH, lever drag rail, loaded up with 60 pound spectra braid, ready to rock and roll at our next fishing session. And I'm going to do the other two rails, but basically that's it. Anyway, just before I'd like to go, um, those of us big fans of Sandman's Tattle Time, you're all aware that we had a little bit of a hiccup recently. I would personally just like to thank you all for your support. It went an absolute hell of a long way. Talk about putting a man back on his feet, that's what he's did with me. All he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. It's a shame that we've got one idiot just trying to spoil things for whatever reason that he's doing. All someone's tattle time is about is helping people, especially the likes of juniors, newcomers to the sport of fishing. That's what this is about, helping them along. I don't think I'm anything special. I know I'm not anything special. Like I've said in some of my blogs, I fished with people that are forgetting more than I'll ever know. Simple as that. But there's not a day that goes by where you don't learn. I've learned little bits and bobs in my life along the way and what I've learned I'm sharing with other people and hopefully it'll help them in doing whatever they do in their day to day fishing. 
Anyway, enough of me babbling on, but many, many, many thanks. Thank you so much for the support that you give me and the team of Sandman's Tata Time. Anyway, I know that was short and brief, but I like to say I had a couple of requests um, asking how I load my rail up with their uh, braid uh, using a multiplier, obviously. So I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, so you take care out there, make sure you're safe, and I'll see you on the next episode of Sandman's Tata Time. Bye bye. There's a nice little flounder there. Just got us off and running. Bite detection, as you saw yourself, was absolutely fantastic on that uh, sonic surf. Fantastic it was. There it is, one nice flounder, that's about 28, 29 maybe, so we're going